Welcome to my channel. I am Ben, the business analyst expert. In today's video, we're going to go over the second part of the summary of the book, The Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco. If you missed the first part, click the link in the description below. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to be notified for future videos. In the first video, we went over three big ideas from the book. We are going to go over six more. Idea number four, wealth versus money. Wealth is comprised not only of money, but of three things, meaningful relationships and family, health and fitness, freedom. There are people with tens of millions of dollars who are not wealthy because they're depressed and miserable. They could be rich, but have wasted their health, their relationships, or given up their freedom. Money does help in allowing you to have time to pursue goals, but it cannot make fast adjustments to your health or relationships. These things take lots of time and energy. Money, however, can give you freedom and that you no longer need to trade your time in order to keep getting paid. Having money only increases your wealth if you use the money wisely to obtain the things that are part of the three-piece wealth equation above. Idea number five, becoming a millionaire. The only way to get rich is to start your own business. It's easy to read a piece of news where some rich founder got paid millions for their brilliant internet company. But keep in mind that even though it looks like an instant hit, it was not. It was a long and continuous process to get to that point, always. Usually this process takes at least years. If you try to shoot for only big sudden hits, this may cripple you mentally and cause you to make risky investments or only go for short-term opportunities. Instead, make a plan. The key is to create a business and product that continues to run without your constant direct involvement, even while you sleep. The author of Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling, is a prime example of a product that keeps generating revenue long after it's been created. Her books and movies keep bringing royalties, although no new writing is taking place anymore. In order to achieve a self-sustaining product, you need to find a market gap, make a business plan, learn all the skills necessary to execute that plan. Idea number six, producer over consumer thought patterns. Since young age, we are taught to think like consumers. This includes looking at the ad and the product that's shown to us and imagining how that product will make us feel. This is a limiting view. We should instead think about the behind the scenes of that product and figure out how each business operates so that we can learn from their business model. We need to understand which differentiating features make a product unique. We need to understand the revenue model and their manufacturing setup. Focus on marketing details and product design so that you can learn what makes products successful and which of these ingredients you can adopt for your own product. Do what you love is bad advice. The consumer doesn't care about what you love to do. They only care about what can bring them value. Most of us are very self-focused and may create products that satisfy our own self-perception of the world or our own interests. The product we create must solve a problem and be highly desirable to a customer. The product needs to be appropriate to your target audience. For example, don't sell expensive luxury items to people who can't afford them. Instead, solve their most direct problems. It is possible to do your passion for a living, but most people will underestimate the caliber and quality level that you need to be to achieve that. You need to be among the best because you are competing against everyone else. Only the hungriest and most talented of them will win. If you want to sing, dance, or be an actor, be prepared for monumental effort. A reality check for a profession like this is being able to reliably secure gig after gig and be the chosen performer over others. You need to be the top 1% with extreme dedication to your craft because the competition in the arts field is extremely high. Idea number eight, supply and demand. The best businesses aren't easy to enter by everyone. If they were, then this would be far too much competition and thus not enough profit for you in that business. Be wary of any business idea that seems too easy to enter into. Any such idea will have extreme competition levels and force you into an extremely competitive field. A business is always comprised of a series of decisions and tedious actions. Even if you want to run a simple business like an inn, you will need to first find and finance a property, renovate it, insure it, get permits for it, and then hire staff and find customers. Expect a lot of work. Idea number nine, product ideas. Constantly come up with and test new product ideas. Never stop learning. Each day should contain new business insights and build up over time. The amount of information is unlimited in the digital age. Make use of podcasts and audio to learn while stuck in traffic or in a commute. Analyze every product and come into contact with. Who are its customers and what makes it desirable? Is there a market niche related to this product? And this concludes the second part of the summary of the book, The Millionaire Fastlane. 
You will find the link of the first part below this video. I also placed the link of the book in the description below. Give us a thumbs up and show your support in the comment section below. See you in the next video. Until then, keep smiling. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not done it yet. And don't forget to click the notification button. I hope you guys learned and enjoyed this video. Thank you and have a great day.